Hey there, I'm Sean C. Davis, and I'm gonna show you a simple way that you can use Node.js to check for broken links on your website. Let's dive in. All right, what I have here is a very simple, bare bones project. I just have an index.js file that is logging hello world when we run the script. And the script is called check links. And you can see it just runs node index.js. So if in my console, I run npm run check links, I then get hello world printed to the console. Perfect, that's all I really need. Now we're gonna use two dependencies for this project. So let's get those installed. And I'm just going to install them as development dependencies. I do this because usually this sort of script is something that's going to get run when you are using either in a continuous integration context or maybe when you're working locally or whatever. But if you're building a package or something like that, it's probably not something that you want in production. So I'm installing these as development dependencies and we're gonna use two packages here, Linkinator is going to do the actual checking for us. And then chalk is just a nice pretty way that we can add colorized output to the console. And I'll show you what I mean. In my script here, I'm gonna get rid of the content that I had. And actually, you know what, before I go any further, I'm gonna save this, but I'm actually gonna rename this to index.mjs so that I can get fancy and use these um, imports rather than require statements. So I'm gonna change my script here to node index.mjs. And then all I have to do, let's import Linkinator and the class is called link checker. All right, and then we're going to start with the base URL and we're going to recursively check for links on the site. So what I might do is have a constant and let's start with a, Ooh, let's start with a small site that I know. This is a site that I just built. Whoops. And it's really small. I, I, it shouldn't have any broken links, um, but let's, let's see what happens. All right, the const, uh, another constant here, and we're gonna call this checker. This is gonna be our, our actual link checker instance. And then basically the other uh, advantage we get from having this be an MJS file is that we can use top level awaits, which is really great because it simplifies, cleans up our code quite a bit. So we're going to await that the checker actually runs this check method. And then we've got to give it a couple properties. So the first one is going to be the path, which we'll use our base URL for that. And then we're going to tell it that we do want it to follow links it finds on the site. All right. Now, if we run this again, check links, it's actually going to do the work, but nothing is really going to happen. You can see that it's, it seems like it's hung up. That's because it's actually accessing the site and doing the checking, but it's not gonna put anything out because what we need to do is we need to hook in to the actual checking methods, uh, the, the checking events, and then do whatever we want during that time. And so what, what we can do to make sure that we know what's happening is we can set up these event listeners. And there are really two that we're going to concern ourselves with here. The first one is link. So I can say checker and on link. Oh, actually there's a third one here that says retry, um, but we're only gonna work with the first two. So on link, and then we have a callback function and it's gonna give us the link object here. And all we really, let's, let's do this. Let's just log our link object, okay? And we'll run this again. And now it's gonna, it's gonna go wild. Okay, we got tons and tons of output. Every single time that it's checking something, it's logging this link to the console. And you can see the shape of this object here. We get a URL, we have a status, a state, a parent, and the parent is going to be the, the page that the link was on. And then if there's a failure, I'm not gonna scroll up and find it, we'll find one. Um, if there's a failure, then it's gonna have some more details in here. But, and you could dig into that if that becomes relevant for your particular use case. We're just starting with the basics here. So we're not really gonna worry about the failure details. We'll know if state isn't okay, if status isn't 200, that we have a failure. And then we can simply just let ourselves know that we have a failure. Okay, so we've seen the shape of the link object, but now let's go and explore the other event, which is called page start. And this is going to be the 
page object. I oh, actually, no, it's it's really just, I mean, it doesn't matter. This is just a name, but it's just the URL, I believe. Let's, let's, let's make sure I'm not making this up and we're gonna run it again. Ah, okay, it's, it is more of a page object. I, we called it URL. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Um, okay, so we see that, yes, this is actually a URL object. We've got the full href and um, we've got origin. We've got all sorts of the URL parts and we can mess around with this. But basically, every time that we start checking a page, we're going to, we're, we're going to get this object. We're going to be able to run this callback function on the page start event. Okay, so now we know how to hook into the process. We can start to think about how we want to display the output. Now, adding a bunch of objects here, it's not really helpful. We wanna be helpful to the person who is checking this process. What I really like to do is follow some method I found long time ago in putting just one character in the console with a colorized output that can give you an immediate feedback on what's happening. And then when everything's done, give you more detailed responses. So let's go back here for a moment to our link um, event listener. And what we're going to do is first, actually I'm gonna add a new constant and this constant is going to be called logger map. And we're basically gonna map the state to the um, to the output that we want uh, in the console. So we knew that one was okay. And for this, we're, this is where chalk is gonna come in. So actually let me import chalk from chalk. So chalk dot, let's use green cause okay is good. And then there's broken, which is bad. And so we can use red and we'll use maybe an um, exclamation, exclamation mark there. And then there's skipped, which Let's do yellow seems great. And maybe that's a question mark. Okay, so we'll save that. And then when we check a link, what we can do is just write the output. So we'll say process that standard out and write. And then we're gonna call that logger map and we'll pass the link dot state to it. Okay, now you might wanna have a fallback here, but really, we know I've played around with this enough. We know it's going to be one of three states. So we're going to get a result here. Now let's clear my console and run this again. And as this runs, rather than seeing all this output happen, we just, we get one, uh, we get one character per test. And so as this happens, we can see that we're making progress. Things are happening. We're getting some feedback, but we're not littering the console. We can, we can then, what we can do is we can package up results and we can print them at the very end. So with that, let's start to do that. What we can do is we can then store some sort of reference to those broken links. So what if we just call it, uh, oh yeah, uh, broken links. And I'm gonna use let because we're gonna change this variable over time. And what we'll do here is now on link, we can write the result just like we were before, but we can say maybe if the state is broken, then we're gonna push the results. Okay. And, and then what we can do when we're, so this is great. We will um, we'll capture all the broken links. And then after we're done checking, what we can do is we can say if broken links is greater than zero. So if we have any broken links, we'll, we'll just do some fancy um, output. So we've got an empty line there. And then we could say, maybe we found, how many broken links did we find? Broken links. And then we can do, we can basically loop through each link. So for broken link of broken links, let's start a new line and then broken link dot URL. And, and then we'll, we'll kind of, we'll, we'll give this some formatting. So we'll maybe say uh, status, and then we can say broken link dot status. And then we'll have another section here that is, or another line that is source. And that's where we can do 
our parent path, but we'll, we'll kind of keep this clean. So we'll create a new URL object, link parent and path name. All right, and we see that we're gonna have a broken link here, which is great so that we can actually demonstrate this happening. So let's run it again and we'll see we're gonna get this feedback. And then at the end we should get, oh, we got two broken links this time. So it's some, something's happening where it's, um, in, we're getting inconsistent failures, which is another thing that's great to know and can help you clean up these issues. And then we get this nice clean output when we're done, found two broken links. It tells us what the links are. It tells us what the status is, and then we can dive in further. And so you you can you can take this a number of different directions from here. You see that the status is 999. It turns out that linkedin.com links will return this regardless. So you're either going to have to mimic some specific user agent, or you're just going to say, you know what, I'm going to, for now, I'm just going to ignore linkedin.com links. And the very last thing before we go, as we're done kind of just exploring the basics here, is that we might want to also log the pages that we've checked. So to do that, we can come back to our, our page start method, if I can type page start, and then we have our URL. And what we'll do here is we'll, actually let's, uh, let's say pages checked, and we can just say pages checked, dot push and what we will add is really just the url that seems that seems easy enough and then at the bottom we can give myself a new line here again and then we say whoops we say checked and we'll, we'll basically do what we were doing before um, to give us the number of pages checked pages and then a for loop page of pages checked log we'll kind of indent it a little bit new url page dot path name all right one more time here let's take a look at the end we get this list of 17 pages that we've checked so you can see how this is the base of what you can really take, twist, flex to yeah, mold, to, to make it work for you. And I, I, I'm happy to do future videos if you want to explore, okay, well, what do we do with this? Where do we put it? Do we, how do we work this into continuous integration? What do we do with a failure? We could send it to Slack. We could email ourselves. There's so many different ways we could do that. Leave your questions, your thoughts, what you want to see in the next video in the comments below. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.